Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to go through how to solve a problem like this where we have a composite material that is uh, one material on the top half and the other material on the bottom half, and we're going to put it into pure bending, and we're going to figure out what is the maximum tensile and, uh, and compressive stresses that we are developing uh, in this member. So the way that we do this is we need to transform the cross-section into one material like we were doing in the last couple of videos. So we need to figure out what our ratio is for N. In this case, let's put it all, let's transform it all so it's a, a material of brass. So we'll put uh, 200 gigapascals. Actually, you know what, let's write this out. So we'll transform, we have ES over EB. And that's going to give us 200 gigapascals over 100 gigapascals. And that just gives us that number of 2 for N. Now what we do is we need to multiply the area of steel by N in a direction that is parallel to the neutral axis and we'll end up getting the transformed composite section like this where we've just increased the area of steel by two so now its width dimension is just twice as wide so now it's 60 millimeters before it was 30 millimeters now when we look at this now what we have is the have the entire thing we have the uh, modulus of elasticity will be equal to uh, we've transformed it so this section is also equal to 100 gigapascals and this section already was 100 gigapascal. So this whole thing now can just be solved as a composite area problem, like a, like a pure bending problem with a composite area with a single modulus of elasticity. And then that means that we can use the regular formulas that we're looking for. So what we want to really do is we want to plug in, we want to figure out the, the Y bar, uh, the centroid, the location of the centroid of the composite shape or the transformed area and that is this expression, it's the sum of the, uh, the y bar of times a of the parts over the sum of uh, the areas by parts. So we're just going to find uh, the area, we're going to find the centroids of each section and we'll throw them into this table as well as the areas of each section 1 and 2 and then what we want to do is we just want to throw in the, uh, the y bar times a term which was just this column times this column, you get these when we sum them up and then we actually can uh, plug in the sums here because we have them and we find that the centroid of the composite or transformed shape is 35 millimeters from the bottom. So we're going to be, we're going to be needing that for the next part where we're calculating the moment of inertia for the transformed shape or the centroidal moment of inertia about the, uh, this axis here that passes through the centroid. And we're going to find that it is 742,500 millimeters to the power of 4, or 0 0.7425 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power of 4. And now that we have that, we can go and calculate the max stress that's developing in the brass section. So the brass section was the, uh, was the section here at the bottom. And the C, the max distance here, is going to be 35 millimeters, and the applied moment was 1.5 kilonewton meters. So we can drop all that in. And that works out to 70.7 uh, times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. And right, there's 2 meters on the top, 4 on the bottom, so that's where that comes from. And that 10 to, 10, 10 to the 6 newtons. 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared is just megapascals, so that's 70.7 megapascals. All right, and now this is truly, uh, uh, this is equal to the max stress in the untransformed region, right? Because we are looking, this was, uh, we just did the bottom section here, and this was brass, and the, the most extreme distance fiber here at the bottom is in the untransformed section. Um, and so... The way that we say that is that is actually equal to the max stress in brass in real life, which is the max tensile stress in the member. Because this was the untransformed section, we didn't tamper with the area in our calculations, and so this is all good to go. Now, for the steel section, we want to find out, what well, we were looking for the max uh, compressive stress, so that will be up here at the top, and it will be in the steel section. And when we're dealing in this transformed section, that's going to change a little bit how we solve it, but let's just plug in the values that we have. And the 0.25 meters here is the uh, is the distance from the neutral axis up to here. It is uh, basically it's 60 minus 35, and that gives us that 25 millimeters, which is 0.025 meters. So if we just run this, we end up getting 50.5 times 
10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. Uh, and this is uh, 100, or sorry, this is uh, megapascals, so we get 50.5 megapascals. Now, this 50.5 megapascals uh, is the stress that we that we just calculated in the, trans the extreme fibers of the transformed area or region. But what we did here in this calculation is we inflated this area by a factor of n. In this case, n was 2. And so this value here for the transformed section is actually reduced by that factor. So in real life, to calculate what the stress is actually at that most extreme fiber in the steel, we need to multiply it by the factor of n. Uh, to kind of take out that inflation of area that we created. So one way that we can write this is uh, we want to calculate the the max stress in the steel in real life and so all we have to do is we just take n times the the max stress that we've calculated at that point in the transformed section, right? And so this will bring back, uh, this will reduce basically that area by a factor of n or just correct it to what we had altered it up here. Uh, so in our case, n was 2, and uh, the max stress that we had calculated was 50.5 megapascals. So that means we're going to be actually getting 101 uh, megapascals. Uh, and this is the max compressive st stress in the member. Now if you guys are like me though, I prefer to see a visual representation of this. So uh, I'm just going to set it up right here. So we, if we wanted to plot the stress distribution in a uh, in a cross section uh, in a composite member like this with a single modulus of elasticity, we could uh, we would just draw it on like this. Let's just do it in a certain color, maybe red, where uh, the max tensile stress was 70 and the max compressive uh, of the transformed section was 50. So it would look something like this, where it passes through zero there and this would be um, this was 50 50.5 and this was 70.7 now in real life this is the actual situation so this red line corresponds to to this uh, composite shape with one single modulus of elasticity but in this case in the real life situation we don't actually have this type of area, and so we had to we had to increase the steel part by a factor of two. So the way that we would actually adjust this in real life is we would blow this up. It would be exaggerated by two, basically. So this would come out to 101, and it still passes through zero because it's a neutral axis, and then it comes down here to some value that we actually haven't calculated, but you could quite easily calculate it. Um, so this would be, where are we? So in real life, this is 101 megapascals, and uh, and we would just get rid of this stuff. So this is not actually happening in real life. This is why we adjust it with that factor of n, and we get something at the end of the day that looks like this. So this is the real stress distribution. Uh, you can see it's increasing at this two times rate uh, while we're in the steel section, and then while we're in the brass section, it's increasing at the original rate that we would have calculated for the modulus of elasticity of brass.